Man, honestly, for me, Ableton Live 12 is shaping up to be the best whole number version overall in recent years. And I'm super stoked about the latest free update, Live 12.3, which is now available as a public beta. So it's yet another huge update from Ableton, and stem separation is finally here and it runs locally inside Live. And we also have Splice integrated directly inside Live's browser. And yeah, I'm unusually late with this video, but I was on vacation last week when the beta dropped so let's check out some of the major new additions so yeah we finally have it one of the most requested features built-in stem separation and if you followed Ableton for a long time you know they have always take their time to add new features until they can implement them in a way that meets their high standards of quality and I really appreciate this approach. And sure, stem separation itself isn't a groundbreaking feature anymore, but having it integrated inside life is actually a big deal for me personally and for many other users as well. So here's how it works. Right click a sample in the browser or a clip that you've already loaded in the project and choose separate stems to new audio tracks. And so like any other stem separator, it splits them into four parts, vocal, drums, bass, and everything else. You can also enable a higher quality option by pasting this command in an options.txt file. And I will link Ableton's instructions on how to create this file and where to place it down in the video description. But this switch between high quality and high speed isn't available if you don't add this option with the options.txt file. So let's choose the high quality, it will take longer of course. So I'm using an old song here so the mix isn't clean and crisp which will give us noticeably worse results than a more modern mix but these are the types of songs that I usually sample. So I wanted to see a real world use case for me instead of cherry picking a song that will give the best results. Man I can totally understand why the high quality is an additional feature that you add with this option txt file because it is taking it's taking a while. It's taking a lot longer than the high speed one. So here's how the original track sounds. Here are the vocals. Loving you was easy to do. Loving you, loving you, loving you. Drums. Bass. And all the rest of the instruments. Let's compare it to the high speed option. So honestly being patient and using the high quality option is worth it because as you can hear the vocals with the high quality option are not only clear but if we compare them to the high speed option With the high speed option we have a lot of other instruments that are left in the vocal track, for example this flute here, which isn't there in the high quality option. Otherwise the drums pretty similar. Yeah, the drums were exactly the same not much of an improvement I guess the drums on this track don't really sound that crisp at all anyway because it's a, like probably from the 60s or something bass and the other the high speed option up here sounds quite muffled like a low quality mp3 while the higher quality option Thank you. 
definitely pretty good again considering this is an old track and it and it's not really a crisp modern mix and so yeah each stem is rendered onto its own audio track in a new group track and any audio effects from the source track will also be added to the group track so yeah i guess they didn't enable the high quality setting because it takes ages to process but i think it's definitely worth it for the quality difference especially on vocals. So the second major feature of 12.3 is Splice integration directly in Life's browser. I'm pretty sure most people watching this know what Splice is. It's a subscription-based sample library that's now really easy to access. You can find it down here in the places category and you can search for one shots, loops in the Splice library and just drag and drop them directly onto your projects and it just all works super seamlessly. Once you drag a sample onto the timeline or a sample player like let's say Simpler, the sample is automatically downloaded and it's added to your user library. But you know what? The most impressive feature here is the ability to drag and drop parts of your arrangement onto this splice widget. So it can use its AI powered search to find complementary samples. So I'm, just, so I'm just gonna select part of the arrangement, just drag and drop it where it says search with sound. So here's how the arrangement sounds without the sample. And the samples that it's suggesting, I think they fit pretty well. Again, they, they're automatically synced to, to your project's tempo so you can preview them before using your credits to get them. Works pretty well, man. Pretty dope. I may have to renew my Splice subscription. And since it's analyzing the samples to see if they match to your project, it kind of works as a key detector because it has to detect the key of your material in order to suggest relevant samples. Um, but I think proper key detection is still needed. Now, freezing groups has always been a highly requested feature and we still don't have it. But now we have bounce group, which we can either do in place which will replace the group with a single track containing the bounced audio, or we can bounce to a new track. So it basically works like the bounce feature that was introduced in the previous update, but it just now works for all groups, which is pretty cool. So you can just right click anywhere on your group track, bounce group in place. So this replaces the group with a single track containing the bounced audio. Or if we undo that, you can do a time selection and then you can bounce group to a new track. It will bounce only that time selection to a new track. So this is what you can do if you want to still keep the group. So even if it's not proper group freezing, it still does a similar job. And the group track is bounced with all its processing, including any return effects. But also you can copy a clip or a time selection. Let's select this part here, right click, copy. And then if you create a new audio track, right click, paste bounced audio. So it will paste that part we had in MIDI, but only this time it's in audio. But also if you edit that part and paste bounced audio again, it will paste it in its current state. So you can modify the material and paste it again and again to quickly create variations, which is pretty dope. One of those things that you didn't know you needed, but now that it's here, it's pretty neat. So I would have updated the auto pan device, which is now called auto pan tremolo. And so you just have this additional tremolo mode. To be fair, you were already able to do that with the autopan device by changing the waveform shape and the face. But a dedicated tremolo mode is obviously more elegant. So yeah, we now have proper tremolo. Nice. And Life's devices now also have the option for A, B comparison. So you can store different states of the devices as A and B and switch between them and compare them. And this is done via this command here from the title bar menu. Oh, and the new Max for Life device, Expressive Chords, also gets a nice update. This new green icon here is Learn Mode. So if we hit that, 
we can select the chord, copy it and duplicate it to another slot. We can now, let's say, transpose the new chord, but we just paste it. Or if we hit learn, we can just play a chord on our keyboard. Hit learn again, and that chord is saved to the third slot. So yeah, we can now add our own chords to expressive chords, which should address the complaints of some people when the device was released without this option to add custom chords. And the whole update should silence all these critical comments from people that complained when Life 12 was released. I mean, when you add the features from the last three updates to the core features that Life 12 came with, you have to be really picky to keep complaining. And I'm sure there are a lot of requests that weren't addressed, but you have to realize that this DAW is made for millions of people, so you can't have all the features custom tailored to your specific workflow. But also, who's to say that your feature requests aren't coming in the next update? Just be patient, keep making music, like and subscribe if you found the video useful, check out my sample packs and my Ableton Live packs from the link down in the video description. If you haven't done it yet, a great way to support the channel and I will catch you later.